Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we have a very interesting video. It's an isometric block, so to speak, with a lot of curves, um, isometric circles, stuff like that. It's a drawing that I gave to my class and they have to do it. So here I am doing it as well. I'm not gonna do all the constructions for the isometric circles, but I'm basically gonna show how you can get them in AutoCAD. All right, so let's go, let's get it. So it's an isometric block with curves. And of course, having curves makes it significantly more difficult, but we are going to do this. We are going to do this. So you would have had some time to view the finished product at the beginning of the video. So it's a block with curves on either end. One curve is larger than the other. And it has two cylinders. One cylinder is larger than the other. We are going to begin by doing the base. So we're going to start with the circles. This is the smaller circle with a radius of 28 millimeters. And the larger circle has a radius of 40 millimeters. So I'm drawing the second circle here, which is the larger of the two. And what we're going to do now is we just want to add immediately add the thickness of the base. All right. This is a 3D drawing. So there's depth, there's height, there's width, there's everything, there's length. And uh, we're going to be using isoplane a lot. I would have gone through at length how to use isoplane in a previous video. So that video will be linked in the description. We are adding our depth to the base. It's 20 millimeters. I'm just gonna, so I have a 20 millimeter vertical line. I'm just gonna copy what we have already and just transfer it to the top. I'm also trimming some lines just to remove some of the confusion that can occur when there are too many lines on a drawing, right? Ideally, we are supposed to leave our construction lines in place so that the examiner or whoever it is, the teacher can see how you got to this point. But for the purpose of this video, I will remove the lines just to reduce the amount of confusion that there may be. We are moving on now to the two cylinders. They both have a height of 60 millimeters. So you would have seen me draw some lines at 60 millimeters there. These lines are at the center of our cylinders. They are at the center of our cylinders. All right. So the next step would be to draw the top and the base of these cylinders. Of course, as usual, I'm using the wrong isoplane. I was in isoplane right as opposed to isoplane top. So this would be a good time to say this. If you're going to draw a circle in isometric at the top of an object in AutoCAD, you will need to be in isoplane top, right? Isoplane right or left or left allow you to draw circles or arcs at the sides of objects. All right, so we have drawn our first cylinder and we have our second cylinder. Well, the top of the tops of the cylinders to get the base. I'm simply going to copy, simply going to copy the tops of them and paste it at the bottom. Now, if you are doing this for an official exam, you will be required to actually do the construction for, uh, for a, a circle in isometric. That is in another video that I've done, and that will also be linked below. And my students, yes, they will have to do the construction. 
right for the purpose of the video I'm just skipping that part I'm inserting the sides of the cylinders it's just at the very corner left and right you pull down a vertical line and what it does is it gives your cylinder the 3d look that you so desire so yes i'm making the mistake again of being in the wrong isoplane mode i need isoplane top now each cylinder has a hole in it with a radius of 10 millimeters it's the same size for both cylinders so I am going to I'm going to just copy the first one and paste it on the smaller circle it's the same size hole and this is the power of doing these drawings using CAD software you can copy and paste and so on and the likes if you're doing it manually or traditionally you have no such luck you have to draw it over each time basically again with the base I'm inserting the vertical lines to enclose the shape and I'm just gonna remove some of the construction lines here so that it's easier to recognize now at this point we are I would say we are we have passed the halfway mark and we are doing pretty well now there's a bridge connecting the two circles and there are some points of tangency so this is what we are going to get into now so let me explain how we got this circle that is at the base of the larger cylinder now we would have covered it in a previous video and it's how to draw an external tangent to two circles of different sizes what you do is you subtract the radius of the smaller circle from the larger circle so in this case this, the radius of the smaller circle is 28 and the radius of the larger circle is 40 so if you take 28 from 40 it will leave you 12 so the circle that is drawn at the base of the larger cylinder has a radius of 12 as I said earlier I'm going to do a follow-up video where I insert the different dimensions just in case you want to draw this isometric block using the same dimensions all right so that's the explanation of what you're going to do here and um, as we continue i'm going to explain what's taking place all right so i've explained how we got this circle and what's going to happen now is we need to draw a semicircle right um, on the line connecting both centers of the cylinders I'm just neaten this up a bit so this semicircle is gonna cut through our circle with a radius of 12 as you can see here and we need to draw a line from the center of the larger cylinder to the point of intersection like this now this line will be extended to the circumference of the base and this will be our point of tangency we need a line parallel to this at the at the other end the smaller side of the base so i simply copied it and put it over there so where these two lines touch the circumference these are our points of tangency i have drawn in the line already and looks pretty good so we're just going to copy it now and paste it to the bottom and voila there you have it this is the side of the base it may look a bit confusing right now with all the construction lines but we are doing a pretty good job 
it's at this point that I realized that I should have just left the full circle because I have to do the same thing on the other side of the base or the back side of the base. So again, semicircle to cut the radius 12 line, sorry, the radius 12 circle. And then we extend the line through that point. I'll do a little trim here and just neaten it up a bit. And we need it to be parallel, so we're going to copy it and paste it at the other end. And lastly, we are going to join the two points like this. Now, if that happened a bit quickly for you, feel free to watch the video repeatedly or slow it down or anything you need to do in order to get a clearer picture. I would say we are about 80% through. Um, there's a bridge connecting both cylinders. If you remember from the beginning of the video, there's a bridge collect connecting both cylinders. So we're going to work on that. Um, so we have connected the centers at the top and I'm just extending it down to the base. All right, great. So we know where the center of the smaller cylinder is. And this is very important. Now, the bridge has a width of 10 millimeters. So let's insert that. Let's, let's work on that now. All right, so from the center line on the larger cylinder i'm going to extend a line of five millimeters on either side and um we know that five and five makes ten so that's how we're going to get our width right so the bridge is 10 millimeters wide so that's what we have there and we have the centers identified Okay, so on the smaller cylinder, the bridge stops at a height of 28 millimeters. So we would have just drawn a vertical line of length 28. And we have brought across the center line of the bridge. So it starts at the top of the larger cylinder and goes to mm, about two thirds almost the height of the smaller cylinder. I'm simply copying this line now, the center line that we drew. I'm simply copying it so that we have our width. But the two corners don't quite touch the larger cylinder. So I'm going to extend them past the circumference of the top to ensure that they are making contact with it. As usual, we trim off the excess just to neaten it up, just to make it look presentable. And we'll do the same over by the smaller cylinder. Now, at this point, you are about 90% finished. You're about 90% finished with this drawing. The next major step would be changing some layers and there are a couple lines still left to be to be drawn in at the base of our bridge all right so i've just sped up the video a bit i'm simply changing the layers now so that it's easier to identify what is actually the outline and what is a construction line and a little later on i'll actually be trimming some of the i'll be trimming some of the construction lines just to remove any 
further confusion. Please note, disclaimer, you should leave your construction lines in place so that your teacher or examiner can see how you got your answer. How did you arrive at this point, so to speak? All right? But for the purpose of the video, I am just going to remove them just so that it's easier for you to see what the finished product should look like. Thank mm -hmm. you. 